Hello. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about oh, itchy shoulders. That's what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> it's a fucking circus here. Any road. So we're talking about uh, rough intakes or polishing intakes. You might see people do uh, one or both and arguments and you've seen stuff like this picture which is people golf balling the fuck, you know. Right, so... <laughs> what is all this about? What are the arguments, pros and cons and so forth? So, um, this is a thing called boundary layer effect. So if we get a pipe... Like so... This is a pipe wall, can be a port, can be anything like that. If we could see uh, the air, air flowing through this pipe, or even fluids, if it's any kind of fluids, so if it's water, uh, Pepsi Max, whatever, doesn't matter. If you could see, in a sense, represented by arrows, the velocity, um, and we just basically made a line there, we measured it, you would not see this. Right, that's what you wouldn't see. That's what you'd expect to see, or you know, just off the cuff of it, you think, oh well, you know, it's flowing through, it's constant, uh, constant cross section all the way through. We don't see this. What we see instead, and I'm not using my board rubber. What a twat! I keep forgetting it's there. What we'd see instead is in the middle there'll be flow like this, and then we'd see this, or something more like this. And the reason why we'd see something like this, and we see this a lot, and this is all to do with the viscosity of the fluid, also boundary layer effect. With um, liquids, it's more to do with viscosity. With gases, it's more to do with, um, uh, it's basically chaos. <laughs> it's basically like chaos, uh, chaos theory, basically everything's just bouncing around. It's very hard to um, precisely model and stuff like that. But anyway, what's going on? What's going on is, it's kind of like you imagine, the only thing I think that's really clear is imagine you had a skateboard and you roll across the floor. All good. Now imagine having a stupidly long skateboard and then you have a skateboard on top of that one and on top of that one and on top of that one and on top of that one. When you all go forward, the guy on the bottom with his skateboard, you can move a lot further the further you go away from the ground, because they're all sliding on the top of each other. If that's a good analogy of a way of thinking about it. And then if you had an, a roof with skateboards on it, the same kind of thing. So basically what's happening is, the wall, the, the, this pipe wall is static, it's staying still. And just say it's a fluid like, let's just say it's water or oil or something like that. The water here, or the fluid there, has to basically it has a, 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 a static a static and a friction interaction where basically it has to roll across that surface um, and then you know this here this point here this wall is static so it's still it's not moving so the um, fluid that has to travel over the top of it is basically uh, resisted by this stiction by this viscosity by this friction by this shear and all the rest of it and then over the top of this but let's just say this has got a velocity of five miles per hour it's been pushed at just say 50 but it's got a velocity of five miles an hour because it has this friction against the surface the oil above that is still has friction against the so this one here it has the friction of the oil underneath it but at least this is moving so it has a five mile an hour so this is going 10 miles an hour and then because this is going 10, this is going next to 50, that's going 15 miles per hour and, you know, 20 and 25, you get it. But then it starts to fall back off again. You know what I mean? You kind of get what's happening here. So basically this means that the, the highest velocities are at the center, bang on in the center. Everything can flow beautifully in the middle there. When it comes to gases, the problem with gases is that gases don't travel well, no, they don't. They don't travel linearly like that. Uh, they bounce around. This is the problem with them. Um, they're so energetic because of the energy that they have, because of the temperature they're at. They bounce around. And because of this bouncing around, it becomes ridiculously chaotic. 
Now you can um, approximate the flow of uh, gas through a pipe by basically doing the same kind of drawing. But in reality, you've got this, if you could trace the track of the air, gas molecules, like if we could just basically color them and then have a long exposure, they bounce around like this. <coughs> and the net, the average, the average direction and velocity would be in that direction. But they are literally bouncing fucking everywhere. Well, what makes them bounce around? This surface is really rough. Regardless of how mirror polished you think it is or whatever, it is a rough surface microscopically. And when you look at these electron microscope pictures, I'll put one up of a rough, sur of a smooth surface. When you look at these surfaces, you might think, yeah, but that's really quite flat. There's only a few crevices and stuff. The size of atoms compared to that, that's like the fucking Grand Canyon. And you know, when they slam into that little tiny little groove or cut or whatever, slicing that surface, scratching that surface, it's like hitting a fucking brick wall. Gas is a fucking tiny compared to that. You know, so basically what they do is they travel along and they go bang and bash into here and then they strike another one and then that deflects them this way or that way or this way or that way and it just bounces around but it all bounces around um, with an average flow that way so the argument is in a sense not the bloody board rubber the argument because it's beautiful look at that <laughs> the argument here is well what you want to do is you want to reduce this uh, rough surface Instead of having a rough surface like this, where all these atoms can bounce across it, you want a surface like this, that's smoother. Right then, where were we? Oh yes, so, um, yeah, the idea here is to make basically your ports mirror polished and smooth and all the rest of it. So there's this thing called the boundary layer effect. And what happens is, is when we were talking about the flow through the pipe is that atoms bounce off here and do all this crazy shit. We might as well do a different colour actually. Um, but this kind of helps because what it does is the best way I can think about it is um, like a conveyor belt. So in a sense, and this is an approximation, you get a turbulent region like where the air is kind of doing this. And the best way to this show is just arrows like this right where basically the air is random chaotic and it's all over it's turbulent and then what happens in a sense is that the other air can then stream across the top of this it's like a cushion of air you kind of think like a hovercraft in a sense where it basically just rides over the top of it and the velocities may increase a bit and so on where with a smooth finish like this um the, the air molecules can in a sense accelerate more and then when they do bounce off they can fire into the what is it and then more hit this and then it becomes more chaotic so supposedly the reasoning is is that this is more chaotic chaotic and this isn't you've got this boundary layer effect this is in a sense how the dimples work on a, a golf ball there's a lot more to it but because uh, and tennis balls as well in the tennis ball they basically capture the air in the fur which means you've got this cushion of air that has a lower um, friction a lower uh, skin friction than whatever so tennis balls the tennis balls fur and the dimples in the golf balls are two ways of creating kind of like this boundary layer of air around it so the argument is in a sense that rougher ports like sandblasted ports and all the rest of it are just as good as mirror finish ports better worse the fact of the matter is you're not really going to see any difference because when you actually look at your ports and you're looking at the texture of these surfaces you have a pot that's yeah big just say it's not this big you know, it's not to scale just say this is you know times 20 scale or something shit like that but you've got this port in your cylinder head something like this inside here and the, the, the boundary layer, the surface finish, you know, it's, fuck all, it's this much. It's absolutely tiny where, versus your cross-sectional area. So if you took this thin 
contact region around here, this boundary layer effect, it does propagate outwards, so your fastest flow is still in the middle. But the difference between smooth and rough, nah, is going to be fuck all. You'll have a boundary layer effect here, or you won't, and it'll be slight, and so on, and so on, and so on. What's more important with ports is stuff like transitions. So step transitions are usually bad. So if you have, um, it's basically manifold and port matching, stuff like that. So if you have a manifold port like this, and then you have um, your cab or your throttle body or something, and it's like this, the hole in there is smaller, so there's this step. What's going to happen there is that the air is going to expand into this region. It creates turbulence here and turbulence here like this, and it makes a bit of a rough almost like it's not a choking point but it reduces flow velocities through there if they're either hitting a sharp wall or there's a depression depressions flow past here is a lot less restrictive than just say a solid wall if you're going the other way and just butting into that wall um boundary layer effect has been used on aircraft you'll see on some trailing edges around some intakes there'll be load in the skin there'll be loads of tiny holes and in a sense what they have is they have an intake like this, which is usually pointy like this. And then they'll have holes, tiny little fucking holes that run all the way down the insides. And what's meant to happen there is that air from the inside, this will be high, slightly high pressure because it's convergent. So basically it does this. And then this air bleeds out here and it creates turbulence here. Like so, through all these holes, there's loads of these holes like this to the outer floor, then the outer floor basically just bounces across, it's kind of like skipping a stone across a pond, it kind of supposedly skins across the top, they, you know, they've done this, um, you can also buy Tessa tape, which is a certain type of tape, um, well Tessa's the company, but it basically has loads of perforations on the leading edges where you have um, leading, um, removable leading edges, also where you have ailerons and flaps and stuff like that, you can actually have this Tessa tape that covers up the gap depending on what you're trying to do with some late trailing edges and leading edges on wings so just say you have an aerofoil like this you'll have a trail a, 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 a movable nose and an aileron like this sometimes you want air to actually flow through these like so um, because basically it increases your angle of attack so you won't stall stuff like that but on stuff like gliders and small aircraft and stuff, they aren't designed this way with an aerofoil on, in shape. It's literally just the butt end of the wing and they'll have an aileron on a hinge like this. And basically what they do is they put tessa tape here like this with loads of bleed holes, perforations along the, the let edge of it to help with this boundary layer and the transition and stuff like that. It's, you know, it's... With ports and stuff, I really wouldn't worry about it. Now, people do talk about um, evaporation, so port wetting. So you have a port, and what will happen is, is because the port is cool, or it's a water-cooled head especially, or an air-cooled head actually, but generally water-cooled, um, that fuel will come out of suspension. So when you have a rough surface like this, the fuel molecules and air molecules are all bouncing around because it's a vapour, it's basically a gas. Um, or an aerosol, whichever one you want to say. And what can happen is, is because these, because your hydrocarbons have a lot of mass compared to just say like, um, you know, two oxygens so, or two or nitrogens, you know, N2 stuff like that. These are quite light compared to these high, long chain hydrocarbons, which are 18, whatever's long, and all the rest of it, isooctane stuff like that. When they hit the solid, when they hit the wall, they absorb heat. They basically condense and you get port wetting. This happens a lot when it's cold. This is why we have heated ports on some things, uh, heated carburetors, stuff like that. So on cold starting, this you know reduces that point. And there's a good thing with the ER5 actually uses a wax valve, but we'll talk about that in a different, um, for carb heating, there's actually a wax valve that comes off the cooling system. We'll talk about that in a later video. Um, but yeah, basically what people do argue again is saying that a rough port, because it has a larger surface area, just say something that's nicely polished and all the rest of it that this will cause more wetting or less wetting because there's a larger surface area it means it can absorb more heat there's arguments both ways at the end of the day Yamaha and all the rest of it they don't see it's a process that's worth bothering with for the simple fact is the casting finish seems to work absolutely fine now 
Uh, you could also talk about port chilling and stuff like that, but I don't really think that's a consideration too much. Now, the other thing you can talk about is, um, yes, so, you know, people talk about uh, combustion chambers and polishing them so carbon doesn't stick to them. Carbon sticking to your combustion chamber roof isn't the worst thing. Carbon sticking to your piston is actually more of a problem because that's actually reciprocating mass and stuff like that. Now you can get hot spots and stuff which leads to detonation. Generally them kind of things where built up carbon leads to detonation generally means that you're running a race engine or something. You're really pushing this engine anyway and you're increasing your compression or your turboing or something like that and it can become a problem. We will talk about these fucking things where they do these engine flushes. We will do that in the future because I actually want to have a go at that. And yeah, we'll see the results from that. Um, but rough versus smooth, the Yamaha cast this stuff, that's pretty rough in there and they bloody leave it. It's like uh, doing uh, knife edges on the edge of ports. Nah, the flaws, and when your engine's doing 10,000 RPM and that, it really doesn't matter that much. The engine's just gonna fucking draw it in regardless. Um, you would have to be, you know, you're chasing after a tenth of a horsepower if you do stupid things like this and a tenth of a horsepower you are never going to notice a tenth of a horsepower even for something like a moped that's like three or four horsepower you're not going to notice a tenth of a horsepower the air density um the air temperature stuff like that is going to make more of a difference dramatically more of a difference versus um you know if your ports are mirror shined or not hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit